Mortal Kombat, the very name conjures up images of digitised fighters pitted against each other, pools of blood, inventive fighting arenas, hidden characters, finishing moves, friendships, fatalities and even babalities. The franchise has been going strong for nearly 30 years and shows no sign of slowing down anytime soon. I absolutely love the MK series and would put my 20 pence into Mortal Kombat 1 or 2 arcade cabinets back in the day and I would get my rump handed back to me usually on my second fight asking me if I would like it boiled or fried. Yes, I was terrible at the game, but I was always bowled away by the incredible graphics, sound, storylines and strategic move systems that I would witness, and it somewhat soothed the fact that I was probably a lot better at Street Fighter. I do remember the very first time I saw Scorpion's fatality on the arcade. I wasn't the one performing it, mind. I had a friend who enthusiastically wanted me to see this new arcade machine in the local convenience store. Now, I had read about Mortal Kombat in computer video games magazines and seen it advertised on Channel 4's Games Master back in the day. And so I was aware of the game and the fact it used real digitised actors performing the moves and was a lot more violent, incorporating not only devastating moves which would beat buckets of blood from both fighters as they inflict damage upon each other, but the winner after two rounds would then be able to pull off a fatality move which would involve ripping out opponents' spines, hearts or even cremating them. So me and my friend went to the arcade and I beat my first opponent, my friend then pressed block then up and up. Now Scorpion, the yellow clad ninja, then removed his human face revealing a skull and engulfed his opponent in flames and left him into a pulpy skeletal mess. Now this was one of these defining moments where my 13 year old self thought, I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. And I have. Now that was really my first proper introduction to the franchise and I knew I wanted to own this game at some point. I did find out it was coming out on the Super Nintendo and the Sega Mega Drive, however my family wouldn't get these consoles until much later, and so I wasn't able to play them. I did however own a Game Boy and a Sega Master System, and so my first proper Mortal Kombat video games experience were on both of these consoles. I know that the Game Boy version was extremely slow with delayed controls, but you know what, it was all that I had. And it was a version of Mortal Kombat, okay, maybe a bad one, but it was Mortal Kombat to me, damn it. I loved it and I played it all the time, even managing to complete it and helping my brother beat it. Then one day my father came home from the video store, apparently they had now started renting video games and he had in his arms Mortal Kombat for the Sega Master System. Now this was awesome and I would rent it time and time again, until one day when it was purchased for us again by my father. I actually really enjoyed this game as a kid and it satisfied my MK cravings. Then a few years later Mortal Kombat 2 would be released in the arcades and later ported to just about every system under the sun. Since I still had a Game Boy, I received Mortal Kombat 2 for it and would play the hell out of it. It didn't matter to me that most of the cast was missing and I don't even think Kintaro was on the game, but it had the secret fighters Jade and Smoke and the gameplay was a lot more responsive than the first. I have since played the SNES versions of MK1 and 2 on emulation and you know what, they are amazing, but because I played so much of the 8-bit ports, that's kind of what I knew MK was and was sort of my home console introduction to the Mortal Kombat franchise. I probably had more exposure to the cut down versions than any others including the arcade, and it's not that I don't think they are excellent ports, in fact Mortal Kombat 2 on SNES is well known for being the best version to get. It's just when I started playing, I started making comparisons to the 8-bit versions when really it should have been the other way around. I suppose because I didn't play them when they came out back in the day, I just didn't get that wow factor. In any case, I absolutely loved the Sega Master System version of Mortal Kombat so much that I decided to purchase it along with the second game which I was surprised was also released to the Sega Master System quite recently on eBay. So the aim of this video is to review both games. Yes, I want to review them both just to see if the first one was as good as I remembered it and if the second one holds up to the arcade classic as a worthy port. I mean, just reading the back of Mortal Kombat 2, it promises a lot of hidden surprises, new fatalities and characters, so both games will be going under my microscope in this video to see if they are worth playing. After all, I don't want to be totally blinded by my younger self and want to do a very honest review. Having played both to death now, let's review them and see if they are worth adding to your collection. Fight! Gameplay 
Mortal Kombat is a 2D beat'em up game in which players can choose one of six characters while participating in an ancient tournament of the same name, which has for centuries been won by an evil sorcerer called Shang Tsung, who took it from a contest of honour and glory to one which is now a demonic, violent, treacherous competition. This is where winners advance but losers are put to death. Shang Tsung himself is immortal and has constantly won the tournament each time it has been held. Now 500 years later, Shang Tsung invites a new crop of fighters to come to his island and take part in this deadly tournament where their very lives are in danger. Tsung has been taking the souls of all fallen competitors for many centuries which in turn increase his power and influence of anyone who dare challenges him. However, Shang Tsung isn't the only threat as he has also enlisted the services of a giant four-armed Shokun warrior called Goro, who is half human, half dragon, to help him continue winning the tournament. The competitors each fight each other and those who advance to the finals must not only face Goro in a fight to the death, but if Goro has been defeated then the competitors must face Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat where their very lives and souls are on the line. If Shang Tsung wins then he will take their souls from the body of if Shang Tsung wins, then he will take the souls from the body of the defeated warrior, and with this his power increases more and more. There are six warriors to choose from when you start up the game, and each have their own reasons for entering the tournament. Johnny Cage is a mixed martial arts expert and movie star who is frustrated with the fact that he is just too good at what he does and has not yet found any real competition that would challenge him. With an invite to the tournament, Cage hopes to not only be tested as a fighter and come out on top, but he also realises that if he wins the dangerously challenging Mortal Kombat tournament, this will bring him even more adulation and acclaim and also means he will be the best fighter on earth. Sub-Zero is the Blue Ninja, capable of producing ice projectiles from his hands and was trained by an ancient clan called the Lin Kuei. Highly skilled, very dangerous and extremely motivated, Sub-Zero enters the tournament with the goal to assassinate Shang Tsung and anyone else who he faces. Sonya Blade The only female fighter in the game, Sonya Blade is a member of the United States Special Forces and is in pursuit of an evil gang known as the Black Dragon. She is particularly interested in apprehending its leader Kano who is wanted for many serious violent offences and has always eluded her capture. However, finally, Sonya and her team manage to track Kano to Shang Tsung's island, where the Mortal Kombat tournament is due to take place. Tsung and his men ambush Sonya and capture her teammates. Sonya is promised freedom for herself and her comrades if she can indeed win the tournament. Liu Kang Liu Kang enters the Mortal Kombat tournament as a representative for the Shaolin Temples. He is only too aware that if Shang Tsung once again wins another Mortal Kombat tournament then the very realm of Earth will fall into the sorcerer's hands and this will enable him to unleash armies to invade and slowly take over Earth. Liu Kang despises Shang Tsung profusely and the tricks he has used previously to cheat his way to many victories and angrily vows to eliminate him to foil his plans. Scorpion This yellow cladded ninja lurks in the shadows of the Mortal Kombat tournament and is somewhat of a mystery. All that is known is that he belongs to a different ninja clan than Sub-Zero and has an intense hatred for him. It is this hatred that Scorpion plans to use to kill his rival, and after discovering that Sub-Zero enters the Mortal Kombat tournament, Scorpion decides to do the same in order to finally defeat his adversary. Raiden Raiden is an immortal thunder god who protects the earth realm and lives above the thunder clouds, ensuring that no one can enter the earth realm unfairly. However, despite Raiden's best efforts, the evil sorcerer Shang Tsung has been able to bend the rules and win 9 out of 10 Mortal Kombat tournaments. So if a 10th tournament is won by Shang Tsung, then Earth will fall into ruin. It is said that Shang Tsung himself personally invited Raiden to compete. However, as the tournament contains only mortals, then Raiden himself must compete as a human. This means despite him retaining some of his fantastical abilities, he is extremely vulnerable and can probably be killed. Once a fighter has been selected, then the player is taken to a battle plan which starts your chosen protagonist from the bottom. There are five types of challenges on the plan that you must go through and I will explain each one in turn. Number 1 The first challenge is to defeat in turn all the other opponents in the tournament. This is how a match works in Mortal Kombat. 
Once a match starts, you and your opponent will fight in one of two fighting arenas, the Pit or Goro's Lair. Each player starts with a full energy bar and you must fight each other. As damage is inflicted on both you and your opponent, the bars will start to decrease. Now the goal is to inflict enough damage onto your opponent until the red energy bars are completely empty. Once this is achieved then you will win a round. Now the goal is to win two rounds of combat against your opponent. Once this is achieved then you can move on to the next competitor. This occurs until you have beaten all five of the Mortal Kombat fighters. Now after each fight you have the chance to pull off a devastating finishing move to kill your opponent and these are known as fatalities and require that the player type in a certain combination of buttons and directions to pull off. This also means that you must be in the right position when you perform one as if you are too far away or too close then it may not work. Once one has been executed you can then watch your fighter finally kill your opponent with a devastatingly violent move. And I used Devastating twice. How cool is that? Okay, section 2. Now comes the second challenge. You have proven yourself worthy of being highly skilled against the other Mortal Kombat competitors, but in order to win the greatest battle of all, you must fight yourself. That's right, a doppelganger waits for you, presumably created by the sorcerer Shang Tsung. Once you face yourself, you will find that your mirror image has the same abilities that you do and it is only by conquering yourself, in a sense, can you move on to the next challenge. Ok, so you've managed to defeat your opponent and yourself, now you must face 3 endurance matches in turn. These matches consist of 2 opponents instead of 1. So essentially once you beat one opponent another one then enters the arena to fight you. Thank god they can't tag in because it would have been an absolute nightmare although that would have been a cool feature that they should have included. Both resurrected fighters have a health bar each whilst you must survive with one. You must win two rounds by beating them twice. Now I like to think that the reason you are facing these same fighters again in a team is because after you defeated them. In singles competition, Shang Tsung was able to take their souls and resurrect them in order to fight you. Either way, you must endure these matches in order to get to the fourth challenge. Ok, challenge number 4. After scratching and clawing your way up the battle plan, you must now face Goro, the four armed half human half dragon warrior who acts as kind of a bodyguard for Shang Tsung and he's always the one you face just before him. Unlike the warriors you have beaten before, Goro is capable of unleashing punishing moves which can deplete your health bar rather quickly. He can grab and pummel you into submission with his forearms and he also has a fireball projectile and despite this being only 8 bit, he is certainly no pushover and any less dangerous than on any other version I've played. Again he is the last thing standing between you and a final showdown with Shang Tsung himself and he must be defeated. Ok, the fifth and final challenge. The final point of the battle plan pits you against the sorcerer and shapeshifter Shang Tsung. Now do not be fooled by his elderly appearance, this guy can unleash a set of deadly fireballs and eerily floats across the arena. When he turns into Goro he can stay in this state for a while and this in my opinion makes him super deadly and dangerous. Either way, in order to beat him and win the tournament you must beat him in two rounds to win and put a stop to his dastardly plan. After winning the tournament, each fighter gets a congratulatory text declaring them as the supreme Mortal Kombat warrior and then another text where we discover what their motives were for entering the tournament and what happens after it. Now if you don't want to see the ending text then please skip ahead to the graphics and presentation section.
There's even a credit screen, which I'm so stoked was included in this version of the game. However, once this is over, then we go back to the title screen. Now, should you lose against an opponent, then you do have the option to continue and try again. However, you can only do this six times. The game does, however, feature an easy, medium and hard mode, and the only difference really is the difficulty. You don't get anything for completing the game on its hardest setting apart from bragging rights. One thing I do need to mention is that the game has a code which enables you to turn on blood in the game. Now to do this you need to wait until you see this screen here which keeps talking about a code in its text. Once you see the screen press 2, 1, 2, down and up and this will enable the blood code allowing you to knock lots of red claret out of your opponents. Another thing to mention is that Reptile is not in the game anywhere, despite this version of Mortal Kombat allowing you to fight on the pit, which is a real shame. You can however challenge a friend to a two player contest, which is extremely cool and definitely makes for some fun battles as the gameplay itself is really good. Now again, this is only an 8 bit version of Mortal Kombat, but the gameplay is absolutely great, I mean ok there are some choppy animations here and there, but I never encountered any particular soda and that would hinder my progress. It doesn't have any of the bells and whistles of other versions, but it's extremely impressive for what's here. My one complaint is that Kano is not on the game. For some reason back when the 8-bit versions were being developed, they would leave a character out. For the Game Boy it was Johnny Cage who was not included, but maybe this was something to do with his animations being too complex for the handheld, yet Kano is in this version. Now, for the Master System version which I'm reviewing here, Kano was left out and Johnny Cage was included instead. I can only guess that this was something to do with cartridge limitations. Still, it would have been nice to play an 8-bit version with all the characters included. I mean, Kano is Sonya's main reason for entering the tournament, and it completely messes with the story if he isn't even in this version. Graphics and Presentation well, it may not have all the arenas, Kano, Reptile and many of the other things you would associate with Mortal Kombat the Arcade, but this looks incredible again for an 8-bit title. The digitised fighters all look good and move surprisingly well with only a hint of choppiness here and there. Matches are fun, competitive and addictive and the individual animations, violence, moves and fatalities are real highlights here. It's so much better than the slow Game Boy version and most versions I have actually played. Now I know that cartridge limitations result in some stuff being omitted, but a few more arenas would have been cool, as the two we have are decent enough, but that's all you get here, there's not even a pit fatality to pull off either. And I'm being really picky here, but the fighter select screen is tiny, and although the characters look incredibly detailed, it's just not as impressive as the arcade or 16-bit versions of this game. Gora, however, looks incredibly impressive here, although he is a little bit smaller. He is still a formidable opponent, and the challenge of trying to beat him at times was really tense. And this was the same feeling I had when I faced Shang Tsung. I found him to be extremely intimidating, and beating him was a little challenging. One good thing about this game is that even if you lose all of your continues, it won't take you long to climb your way back up to the battle plan to either Goro or Shang Tsung anyway, so if you know what you are doing, you can easily storm through the game quite quickly. Music and sound effects Well, there's not a lot here to be honest, you do get an awesome 8-bit rendition of the Mortal Kombat theme on the player select screen which plays for a short time until you see where you are on the battle plan. Then you will fight in either the Pit 2 and Goro's Lair. Now both have their own individual themes which is nice and you do get little reused sound clips when a few fighters use their projectiles, uppercuts or kick and punch their opponents. There is no fight voice sample when a match begins either. I'm not knocking the game for this but it would have been nice to have at least that included. And I know it's 8 bit but I'm sure it wouldn't have strained the cartridge too much in-game story and cutscenes. The booklet that came with the game explains the story briefly of Shang Tsung and gives some history of how he has cheated his way to winning many Mortal Kombat tournaments. It doesn't say anything about the fighters or give any kind of backstory which is kind of disappointing. Starting up the game doesn't tell you anything either. I understand that maybe this was rushed out and assumed that many people I understand that maybe this game was rushed out and assumed that many people would have played the arcade so would be aware as to who the characters are and their individual motivations for entering the tournament. The battle plan in the game kind of acts as a story so to speak that you are pitted against the other fighters and work your way up the plan so essentially you kind of know what's going on. 
However, it is only when you've beaten the soul taking shape shifting Shang Tsung, then are you given any kind of story regarding your character and what becomes after the tournament is over, so you only really get drips and drabs anyway after completing the game. Controls For a game as complex as Mortal Kombat, the developers probe have really mapped the controls well to fit around the restraint of a two button controller. Although you can punch and kick your opponent anytime you want, you simply cannot mash buttons here and expect to win. Although a lot of fighting games indeed use this mechanic, Mortal Kombat forces you to play far more strategically in that pulling off certain moves requires inputting a combination of the directional buttons left and right and either the punch or kick buttons. Fortunately, pulling off certain moves and projectiles is easy and you won't have too much trouble. I will say however, I did have some difficulties pulling off some of the fatalities at first, but they are kind of special moves in themselves, but unfortunately I just wasn't able to pull off many of them in the game. Still, they are all available and with practice, can be done. The best thing however about Mortal Kombat is that in certain points in the game the artificial intelligence can act a little dumb, and so it's possible to keep spamming the same moves over and over to win. I also found a few glitches on Goro which allowed me to beat him with technically I also found a few glitches on Goro which allowed me to beat him without even fighting him too much. When you face him, what you want to do is simply back off and let him follow you to either the left or right far end of the arena. Now simply start rolling in the air. Occasionally Goro gets really confused and just stands there bewildered. He doesn't seem to know what to do. Now provided you don't press button 1 or 2, as this will cause him to get closer, what you need to do is keep rolling in the air and get the timer to count down. When you have a little amount of time to go, quickly punch or kick him just as time is about to expire. He will lose a smidgen of health and you will win the match. Because the rules of the game state that you will beat your opponent. He will... The rules of the tournament state that the person with the least amount of health will actually lose. And so you will win the match because Goro is less health than you. Now you can do this both times on the forearm Shokun, and this ensures that you can reach Shang Tsung with a few more pressures continues in reserve. One thing I do need to mention is that when you fight Goro and you both have not hit each other at all, then you receive a game over and lose any remaining continues you have. Now this is really harsh. The game doesn't seem to believe in draws for some reason. I found this to be an extremely unfair mechanic, but it is what it is. Overall. Well, this version of Mortal Kombat is unfortunately devoid of many things that made the arcade original and its 16-bit counterparts the versions to own at the time, but this does not make it inferior by any stretch of the imagination. Sure, it's limited, but the gameplay is again surprisingly faster than you would think and makes it a fun game to play through. It's a short game and won't take you long to complete, but it's a cheap way to get your Mortal Kombat fix and I had so much fun playing this as a kid and even now I still retain some of those memories so it wasn't just a case of me putting on rose tinted glasses, I generally had a good time in this game and I really think this is a really good version of Mortal Kombat and a showcase for what the Sega Master System could achieve if it was pushed a little bit. So if you can go into this game and accept it for what it is and don't mind the lack of arenas, Kano, Reptile and other impressive effects then I highly recommend it. So with that I give Mortal Kombat for the Sega Master System a 3.8 out of 4. Definitely pick it up and play it and you won't be disappointed. Mortal Kombat 2, just like its predecessor, is a 2D fighting game in which players can choose one of 8 fighters this time who have entered the next Mortal Kombat tournament which is now taking place in another realm known as the Outworld. The Outworld is a desolate wasteland which is far removed from anything seen on Earth. After failing to win the last Mortal Kombat tournament, Shang Tsung returned to Outworld to face execution from the Emperor Shao Kahn. Sung pleaded for Khan's forgiveness and in a last ditch attempt to spare his life, he told Khan of a new plan to hold the next Mortal Kombat tournament to the outworld itself. By luring the warriors from Earth to this realm where the balance would be in their favour, death would surely await everyone who competes and that includes any outworld warriors who wish to try and oppose Khan. The Emperor agrees to Shang Tsung's plan and restores his youthful appearance. To ensure that the odds will truly be in his favour, Shao Kahn makes some drastic changes to the top of the tournament battle plan. 
Should any combatant manage to defeat nearly all opponents, including a mirror match against themselves, then they must fight the sorcerer Shang Tsung. Should Shang Tsung be defeated, then the warrior must face a different forearmed Shokun warrior called Kintaro, who is angry at Goro's defeat from the first tournament, and possesses more abilities, making him much more of a threat than Goro ever was. If Kintaro is killed, then the final battle for Earth takes place against Shao Kahn himself. Khan is confident that because of the unpredictability and dangers that lurk in the outworld itself, and being that some of the warriors are from his own realm working for Khan and may try and betray him, by Khan's logic this simply won't matter because they will all fail, and the souls of these fallen warriors in Earth realm will finally belong to Shao Kahn and allow him to invade and take over. Shao Kahn has also enlisted the help of two warriors lurking in the shadows of the Earth realm to help him with his plans and are waiting to be discovered. Once the game is started up, there are 8 warriors in which you can choose from to compete in this new tournament. Melina Melina is a female ninja who is extremely agile and proficient in using size, making her an unpredictable and dangerous opponent. She serves Shao Kahn as an assassin along with her twin sister Katana, who has also entered the Mortal Kombat tournament. Melina has entered to make the odds of reaching Shao Kahn now an impossible, ensuring early deaths for any competitor at her hands. She has however seen her sister talking to a warrior from Earth, and fears that she may try and betray Shao Kahn by tipping the odds in Earth's favour. Informing Khan of this news, he orders her to keep an eye on Kitana and to take whatever measures necessary to halt her plan, even if this means killing her own sister. Kitana Kitana is another female ninja and assassin for the Emperor Shao Kahn. She is also Melina's twin sister and uses large razor sharp fans to slice her opponents in half. She also has the ability to overthrow Shao Kahn and take over. Again she was unknowingly spotted speaking to an Earth Realm competitor by Melina. Despite not realising she was being watched, she keeps her cards pretty close to her chest and enters the Mortal Kombat tournament waiting for the precise moment to either help or hinder the Emperor Shao Kahn. Shang Tsung After returning to the Outworld and failing to win the Mortal Kombat tournament which would have allowed Khan and his armies to finally grasp the Earth Realm as their own, Shang Tsung returns to face death at the hands of his Emperor, however before Khan is about to kill him and take his soul, Shang tells him of a new plan which would ensure that Earth Realm will finally belong to Shao Kahn. By holding the Mortal Kombat tournament in that world, the unfamiliarity and deadly unpredictable nature of this realm will ensure death for Earth warriors and victory for Khan and his outworld army. Shao Kahn listens and agrees to the demented sorcerer's plan. Khan then restores Shang Tsung's youth, this means he is now much faster and agile than ever before. Unbeknownst to Khan, Shang Tsung also plans to overthrow Shao Kahn himself, but in order to do this he must silently enter the tournament and bypass all obstacles to reach the Emperor in order to catch him off guard. Jax Major Jackson Briggs, known as Jax, is the leader of the United States Special Forces and is assigned to try and track down his teammate Sonya Blade who went missing after the first Mortal Kombat had ended. The only clue he has is of a distress signal that Sonya sent him soon after. After tracking the coordinates it leads Jax to the Outworld where he is forced to compete in this new Mortal Kombat tournament in order to try and find Sonya. Highly trained and motivated, he is not threatened by the obstacles the Outworld poses or the competitors themselves. Jax, although is from the Earth Realm, is extremely strong and has many tricks up his sleeve making him someone not to be overlooked. Scorpion after the events of the first Mortal Kombat tournament, Scorpion was finally able to find peace, having defeated his Lin Kuei rival Sub-Zero who killed him and his family. However, his peace is short-lived, as he rises from the dead yet again when it is discovered that Sub-Zero did not die, and has been lured to the Outworld to compete in another Mortal Kombat tournament. Being already dead, Scorpion has nothing to lose and enters the Outworld unnoticed by Shao Kahn. Fueled by anger and vengeance, Scorpion could care less about who seizes control of the Earth and enters the tournament to once again fight Sub-Zero and to kill him permanently. Sub-Zero The ice-cold Killer Ninja returns after learning that Shang Tsung somehow survived the Mortal Kombat tournament. Upon learning of this new contest taking place in Shang Tsung's realm, he travels to the Outworld in the hopes of finally ending the sorcerer's hold over the once honourable and prestigious tournament. One thing he has in his favour is that Shang Tsung believes Sub-Zero to be dead, and so may not be prepared for him. 
However, the odds of success in this tournament have been greatly reduced for the Blue Ninja. If he somehow survives the other competitors and defeats Shang Tsung, he must then face Kintaro and then the Emperor Shao Kahn. Only then will he be free to leave the Outworld and return to Earth. Reptile Lurking in the shadows of the first tournament was Reptile, the mysterious green ninja who is Shang Tsung's personal protector. After the first Mortal Kombat tournament, Reptile returned to his home of Outworld. Now he faces a dilemma as Reptile's race is slowly heading for extinction. Shao Kahn and Shang Tsung plan to enslave all the remaining reptiles. Reptile overhears his plan and quietly decides to act. He will enter the Mortal Kombat tournament himself and defeat Shang Tsung and the Emperor to ensure the survival of his species. Due to his ability to keep a low profile, he could be an unexpected threat to all participants in this new tournament. Liu Kang After defeating Shang Tsung and winning the first Mortal Kombat tournament, Liu returned home thinking that he had finally returned it from a contest of death and unholy balance to its former meaning, one of skill and honour and respect. After arriving back at the Shaolin temples, he finds them destroyed as well as his Shaolin brothers. Apparently Shang Tsung has sent warriors from Outworld to his home as revenge for Liu defeating him in the hopes of luring him to the Outworld for a second tournament. He travels to the Outworld to kill Shang Tsung for the sickening act and also Shao Kahn, ensuring that they can no longer manipulate the rules of the tournament. After selecting your chosen fighter, you are then taken to the Outworld battle plan which shows your character and also whom they are facing first. Just as in the last game, the aim of Mortal Kombat is to ascend the battle plan, defeating each opponent in turn until you have reached the summit. This time however, there are 7 challenges in the plan that you can overcome, although 2 of these challenges are entirely optional. The first challenge is to defeat all the other fighters in the tournament. This is done by participating in a 2 or 3 round match system. As the match starts, both you and your opponent have an energy bar. As damage is inflicted, this decreases from one of red to black. Once a bar of energy has been completely drained, then you face them in the second round. If you are successful here, then you have the option to perform a fatality or finishing move to inflict maximum damage. After this, you will then head up the plan to the next opponent, etc, etc. The second challenge is a mirror match. This again is a match where you must face an evil doppelganger clone of yourself, created by Shang Tsung. Once again, all of your doppelgangers have the same moves and abilities that you do and are a lot more dangerous this time around, as a mirror match is not in a set place on the battle plan and can occur any time within it. Challenge number 3 is the Sorcerer Shang Tsung. He is the first of 3 final opponents you must defeat to progress to the summit of the mountain. With his youth restored by Shao Kahn, Shang is much more agile than ever before. He can unleash deadly fireballs and can once again transform into anyone you have previously beaten and also yourself. Challenge number 4 has you fight yet another 4 armed Shogun warrior called Kintaro. Unlike Goro who could effectively be taken out from a distance, Kintaro has the ability to leap in the air and stomp on you. This will severely drain your energy bar if he lands it. He can also kick, uppercut and has a surprisingly cheeky fireball which he pulls out of his arsenal occasionally. Kintaro is extremely angry after the death of Goro and seeks revenge, so Shao Kahn decided to allow him to serve as the last line of defence in the tournament. Kahn believes that no one will be able to defeat Kintaro, meaning that victory is assured for the Emperor. Challenge number 5 is the last obstacle in your path to winning Mortal Kombat 2. After defeating all the other competitors, yourself, Shang Tsung and Kintaro, you must now battle the Emperor Shao Kahn. He is much faster than anyone you have faced so far with the ability to do a rapid charge attack to dole out damage. His uppercut and kicks are quite strong and he can also throw an arrow projectile at you randomly. Caution must be taken when fighting him and going in for the kill may result in constant defeat. If you can use your wits and attack strategically then you can end his reign as Emperor of Outworld and win the tournament. Ok so now let's talk about the optional challenges, so why are they optional? Well, this time around there are two hidden opponents that you can fight at various points in the game. They are Smoke who is a grey fast ninja with a tint of red, who has the same abilities as Scorpion and Jade, a female green ninja who bears a striking resemblance to both Melina and Katana. However, she does possess Katana's movesets and uses the same razor sharp fans as her also. 
Both Jade and Smoke's fights take place in Goro's lair from the first game. However, it seems that after Goro's death that Shang had the decorators in as he has really pimped out the place. Gone is the lone skeleton hanging on the wall and the dark cavern is gone. Now it looks awesome with some school headstone walls and floor. Now who said Shang doesn't have any taste? I think he missed his calling as an interior designer myself. Both secret ninjas also do not possess a fatality and there are no consequences to losing to them as you just continue fighting your way at the battle plan. Accessing them is done in the following way. Okay, to fight smoke you need to keep your eye out for one of the developers popping in the right hand side of the screen. At the bottom, this is Dan Forden. When this occurs, press down, punch and kick together. If you do this quickly enough, then a message pops up telling you that you have found the portal from Outworld to Earth and now you must battle an undiscovered warrior from the first game. You will then be instantly warped to Goro's Lair where you will fight Smoke. He's tough, fast and virtually immune to projectiles. I wanted to get a decent look at this ninja, but he would mostly always get the best of me before I could. Thank god for the capture footage because although he's spammy, he's actually a really cool opponent. You can pretty much fight smoke any time provided Dan Forden's face pops up during regular bouts. The best thing about these battles is that win or lose, you will advance up the Mortal Kombat 2 mountains. So if you are facing an opponent whose AI is severely unfair and Dan Forden pops up and you are able to fight Smoke, then you can skip this opponent at the same time. Now the final challenge is of course the secret green cladded female ninja Jade. She's on the battle plan and is represented by a question mark. In order to fight her you must ensure that you have climbed up the plan and are directly below the question mark icon. Now whoever you fight, you must not use punches on your opponent, you have to use only kicks. If you can do this for 2 rounds and win, you will then be transported to Jade. If you don't then you will bypass her and just move on to your next opponent. As I mentioned, Jade is a pallet swap with Kitana, only much tougher. The battle takes place in Goro's lair as it did with Smoke and thankfully she is not as difficult as him. Now I should mention that when you beat Smoke or Jade, you can't perform a fatality on them either, which to me is a little disappointing. However, I don't know if you can in other versions. The fact that they are even in here at all was a good move by the developers. Speaking of fatalities, just like in the original Mortal Kombat, each fighter has the ability to perform a finishing move after besting their opponents for two rounds. Once the finish him comes up, you must key in a button combination and have your fighter in the right position to pull off the moves. This time, they are much more graphic and devastating than ever before. I was quite surprised that even Sub-Zero's fatality must be performed in two parts and was quite difficult to pull off. Most fatalities ensure that opponents will be turned into bare bones whilst others can be burned, eaten and even kissed. Compared with the last game, these look incredible on an 8-bit system, although I did notice that some of the fatalities were too similar, probably to save on animation frames and the like. Ok, upon reading the back of the box it tells you that you can perform babalities and friendships also, however, you cannot do them on this game to my knowledge. This was most likely an error as Mortal Kombat 2 just like the original was ported to just about every system under the sun and so the text on the back and in the manuals were virtually identical so it's very possible that it was indeed a mistake or the developers left the text hoping that the promise of being able to perform these moves would shift more copies but I'm only speculating here. It's a bit disappointing all things considered as it would have been so cool to be able to do these in addition to the main fatalities. There is however a stage fatality that you can pull off on the combat team. You may have noticed the ceiling of sharp spikes on the ceiling. Well, it's possible to uppercut your opponent onto them via a fatality code, so that's something I guess. As for the pit 2, there is no stage fatality, but well, 1 out of 2 is not bad. Also, several fighters who were in the arcade version are just not in this version, and that's really disappointing. There's no Raiden, Baraka, Kung Lao, or Johnny Cage. I mean, Raiden was in the last game, and despite a little choppiness, he was one of the most impressive fighters in the game. The same for Johnny Cage, and that absence is really noticeable here. I do understand that it's only 8-bit and cartridge space is expensive, but a couple more fighters wouldn't have broken the bank. Still, maybe it might have slowed down the gameplay, even having to process the extra animations and like. Just as in the first game, again you get 6 continues and so have at least a few opportunities to fight your way through up the card. If you lose on a certain opponent, this game is a little bit more forgiving than the last one so it's possible to get through the game quite quickly if you know what you are doing. 
Once you have defeated Shao Kahn, then you will once again become the supreme Mortal Kombat warrior and will receive an ending text explaining your chosen fighter's motives for entering the tournament and what they did after, as well as the credit screen. After this, the game then goes back to the title screen and you can choose to play again with another competitor if you so wish. There are also three modes of difficulty, easy, medium and hard, and just like in the last game, you don't really get anything for playing on the hardest difficulty settings apart from bragging rights. Graphics and Presentation What can I say? The opening title screen is one of the best 8-bit openings to a video game I've ever seen. It has the iconic Mortal Kombat logo and the flashes of lightning just like in the arcade. One thing that is missing is the iconic story of Shang Tsung begging for his life in front of Shao Kahn. This would have really enhanced the anticipation of this second 8-bit version of MK. I will say however that the fighter's profiles could again be a lot larger but hey, they are really well detailed here. The battle plan looks like it should, with Shao Kahn standing majestically atop the mountain in that world, and it's a really good use of the Sega Master System's colour palette. It's not hard to see that a lot of effort has gone into it here. Just like in its predecessor, Mortal Kombat 2 only really has two locations from the outworld to fight in, which are the Pit 2 and the Combat 2. Well, three if you include Goro's Lair, where you face Jade and Smoke. Again, I only wish that there would have been a few more included such as maybe the Living Forest and maybe Khan's Arena. It's just that the instruction manual really hypes up the fact that fighting in the Outworld is far deadlier than in the Earth Realm and is more dangerous. I get that it's only an 8-bit version and there are certain limitations again and time constraints but it would make this version stand out a little more. The fighters themselves look extremely well detailed and move quite well here. I was quite surprised that despite a hint of choppiness, this resembles a version of Mortal Kombat 2. The returning fighters from the first game have been given beefy upgrades and pull off their familiar moves with some new improved fatalities. Plus the new ones added are extremely varied with Reptile now a playable character, twin sisters Katana and Melina, Shang Tsung and Jax added also. The fact that you can now play as Shang Tsung is amazing because with his new agility fireballs and ability to morph into any other fighter makes him one of my favourites. I will say that graphically some of the fatalities do look a little similar, in particular Melina and Shang Tsung's. Both appear to suck in their opponents and leave the bones on the ground. Other than that, Reptile decapitating his fallen opponent's head with his tongue was among my favourites, while Scorpion revealing his face to set his opponents on fire has been given a lot more attention this time and is far more epic than ever before. One thing that really bugs me is Kintaro. Now, I'm really glad they made the decision to put him into this 8-bit game. It's just that well when he walks towards you, he kind of looks like a deflated balloon or flat pancake from the side. Given that he's a forearm Shokan warrior, it just doesn't look right to me. It doesn't, however, make him any less dangerous though, and he can perform a lot of the moves he could do in the arcade. Finally, one thing this game does have, and lots of, is blood, and you don't have to input a code this time to get it, which was a good move, so you can once again pull off some deadly bloody moves. In-game story and cutscenes There are no real storyline indicators in this game, as once you're on the battle plan it's kind of self-explanatory. The manual does give you the backstory on how Shang Tsung managed to persuade Shao Kahn to lure the combatants to the outworld for this new tournament. Again, at the very least, the developers should have put this into the game. It really annoys me that developers will usually talk about how certain ports are just like the arcade, and, but when it comes down to it, certain important little details that made the arcade version of Smash and just more compelling were left out for home console owners. Now, this is only a small thing, admittedly, but it would have made all the difference to me. As soon as you get on the battle plan though, the story kind of speaks for itself. You fight an opponent, then move on to the next, so in essence you always know what's going on all the time. The manual does give each fighter a small snippet of information about why they are entering the tournament, but it's only after you defeat Shao Kahn and become the supreme Mortal Kombat warrior that you find out more about each character and what happened to them after the tournament had ended. This was actually a common thing in arcade beat-em-ups at the time, such as Street Fighter 2, where aside from a few taunts after winning, you would be rewarded with an FMV that showed you what happened to your character once you had defeated the final boss. The Mortal Kombat storylines have always been so strong to me that even when I was Scorpion and I had a match with Sub-Zero, it really felt epic as the two rival ninjas hate each other. Certain characters had a feud and intensely hate each other, whilst others purely want to betray Shang Tsung as Shao Kahn. I suppose that when you unlock a secret fight with one of the hidden fighters, Jaden Smoke, well, you are told you have found the portal from that world to worse, so in many ways it is kind of part of the story, because it does kind of 
tell you in detail that you're going to do battle with an undiscovered fighter from the first game. Fans of the arcade and of Mortal Kombat in general, however, will have no problems understanding the different characters and their different reasons for trying to win this new tournament. Controls You would think that Mortal Kombat 2 would not translate well to a 2 button layout on an 8 bit system, however it surprisingly works very well. Button 1 punches while button 2 kicks, using the directional pad and pressing one of the buttons can unleash a projectile. It's much easier to figure out how to pull off Scorpion's harpoon or Sub-Zero's ice blast here and being able to pull them off I felt was even easier than in the first game. I am completely rubbish at pulling off fatalities anyway in the first game as you've known from the first review. I found that it's much simpler here in Mortal Kombat 2 and I was able to pull off every fighter's fatality during my massive let's play of this game. So anyone who struggles with the 16-bit versions or indeed the arcade will be pulling off special moves like a boss. Admittedly it would be easier to figure out this moves with only two buttons and a directional pad but I've never been very good at Mortal Kombat and so this version helped ease me in and get me used to importing simple button commands to pull off deadly moves. This second game is a little harder than the first and I did find that whilst I could spam the same moves most of the time again and get victories there were certain opponents who would block everything I would try and do. Now some may find this kind of frustrating but I respect the fact that the AI is not always going to let you win. Although Shao Kahn is surprisingly easy to beat in this version of NK2. Kintaro however is more of a challenge than Goro ever was. I would try and hit him with fireballs but most of the time he would easily block me and would get a few victories against me. Despite this I did find the old roll in the corner glitch useful and whilst it didn't always work I was still able to pull it off enough times to finally get past this annoying boss. The music and sound effects in Mortal Kombat 2 for Sega Master System are just absolutely brilliant and I really cannot fault them. Compared with the last game which although did have a few choice tracks just felt a little bit bare bones for me and it really does feel that this time around the developers have really pushed the limitations of the master system to try and recreate that arcade feel as much as possible. There's definitely a good use of 8-bit music going on here and it really does feel like a Mortal Kombat game. There's also lots of little sounds as well when you do a fatality, when you punch or kick, everything feels a little bit choppier and a little bit added more emphasis on the combat. And do you know what they've even included when a fight starts? You even hear the fight starting as well after every round which is really really cool. I also love the little choppy sounds whenever you get hit, whenever you hear a fireball and whenever you're fighting Shao Kahn as well and one of my favourite parts about this game is the character select screen. It really gets you pumped up and ready for this brand new tournament and also the music when you defeat Shao Kahn is brilliant as well. Again no issues with the music or sound, it's brilliant. Mortal Kombat 2 for the Sega Master System is a great 8-bit conversion of an arcade classic. As I mentioned previously, the gameplay, graphics and controls work extremely well here and it's nice to see the developers including a little more this time around. For MK2 arcade and 16-bit purists, this version lacks pretty much almost every arena, some crucial characters and most importantly, again, there are no friendships or probabilities. This really annoyed me, again, because it stated on the box that you could do these. I'll be honest though, despite these issues, I had real fun with this version. It felt like a proper sequel and changing and adding new fighters really helped pad things out, making each combatant more varied than ever before. I suppose because I played a lot of the 8-bit versions of Mortal Kombat 1 and 2, that's kind of what I'm used to, and so I wasn't really spoilt with the 16-bit versions until much later, when I could afford them. This like the first game is the perfect pick up and play version of MK2 and can be completed quite quickly. Still each fighter has an impressive vitality, moveset and they all look good. For me it's perfect because again I'm terrible at MK games and being able to actually play one I can beat feels pretty good. I will say that again a few more stages and characters would have helped make this a must play version of Mortal Kombat 2. I do still recommend picking this up as it's a good example of what could be achieved by really utilising the colours and memory of the Master System. With that I give Mortal Kombat 2 for the Sega Master System a 4.4 out of 5. Despite omitting many features and characters this is still a great version of MK2 and dare I say on par with and slightly better than the original. Play it. <laughs>